Hot diggity dog. Oh, those are shiny. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I don't like stuff that like rattles and shakes and stuff. So I try and make the cars we build like, like it's not, you know, some old floppy jalopy with all your body panels. Right. Flopping around and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. our stuff to be nice and tight. And, yeah. Nice. Yeah, see, now I'm filming you. Yeah. You're... <laughs> Hey everybody, so we are at step one of our trip. There's the wife. Step one of our trip, because believe it or not, in, I think I actually told you this in the story. So we're back in Valdosta, Georgia, because the transmission in my merch van that I had uh, some old friends of ours, Gary, uh, Gary Golombiski, uh, had him uh, bring over we're down here, him and his wife uh, brought down here. Broke down. Transmission, of course. And uh, so it has been here since sick week and uh, they finally got it done. So we are now driving to destination number two. Keep, keep. <laughs> so we're, we're driving down to, uh, now we are driving to destination number two in the van. Seems to be shifting properly right now. Let's see. Can't so far when you do that. I uh, uh, probably ought to be looking at the road. Well, there you go. We just entered Florida. Hmm. Well, at least it's warmer down here. So we're going to keep on rolling to destination number two. That just seems sketchy to me. Truck hanging off the back of it on what looks like extremely skinny ramp. Quarter mile, use the left two lanes to turn left onto US 441 South. I see a, a fellow ProMaster van. What if they replace his transmission? Yeah, transmission's still in it so far. Make a break for it. Run! They're racing. No, that's all right. All right. Where have we gotten to? KSR. And we're not here changing transmission. Well, we're here for transmission style work, but yeah. <laughs> or because of a transmission. One thing. In this, we've never been here without having a transmission. Something. All right, let's All right. go inside. Let's go inside, hon. Stop to KSR, Kevin. Uh, let's see. We have the merchandise department. Mm-hmm. What on? What up? Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Hey. Hey. <laughs> oh, yes. This is the wall of wiring. Yeah. Every random piece of wire coiled up and yeah, that, you ever, that you have ever used. That's old harnesses. They come in handy because they're <laughs> they all do. different stripes they do. and colors. And, they do. You know, all that all that good stuff. So. Yep, yep. Awesome. Yeah. A cutlass in progress. That's that's big news for me. Like, I don't think you've even seen this car run. It came off the road in like 07, so. Oh, really? Back when I was running around with Will, so. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember the Cutlass. That's how it, I remember, way I remember we were then. doing stuff way back when. Yep. On the Cutlass. 
This never. This had an Oldsmobile deal in it. This had an Oldsmobile deal in it. Yeah, those were the, way back yeah. in the pre days. Yeah, it's still gonna have an Oldsmobile in it. Oh, yeah. really? A real Oldsmobile? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. Little NASCAR block deal. I took ten years to put together. <laughs> <laughs> so. All righty. Slow but oh, slowly but surely. That? Working on working on my own stuff. That's some nice little pretty work right through there. Yeah, that's a bought piece from Marilat. Really? Like that whole deal. I was just about ready to say, God dang, Kevin. Well, my pretty. welds look good too. <laughs> those are those are me. Yeah, those, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. For, yeah, yeah. for doing more, doing a lot less fab work than I used to. If all the guys are guys are doing now. But I did weld every bar in in your new car. What? Yeah. I just, what? I just, there's yes. a, there's a you, that's why you're here, right? That's why we're here. We haven't you have just <laughs> exposed it all. Video. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take a look at it. So we have to tell the story. There's Kevin. I, I also have never I have never I just telling Val because we picked up the uh, just picked up the merch van mm -hmm. from getting a transmission. Mm -hmm. So I have never officially ever been in Kevin's shop in the last three years unless I had done something with a transmission. Well, today we're going to fix that. Yeah, today we're, <laughs> we're yeah, today hopefully we're going to fix today. that. Yes. <laughs> so, my wife here, as she, yeah, that's right. As uh, we've gone through all things with Sugar Mama, the car, and I knew that this was going to happen because this is the way things roll. She goes, you know, I'd like to go a little bit faster. Maybe a lot faster. I don't, I think you said that. I said, this car's a little slow. You said you, you said, need to go faster. <laughs> if you if you say this car is slow, doesn't that mean that you want to go faster? Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree with Steve. Jeez. <laughs> so, in our midst of our, all of our transmission issues, so we're sitting on the hoist, on that hoist right there. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice Nova. <clears throat> we're sitting on that hoist, and this car right here. What year is this one? Is it twenty ten? Two thousand ten. It is a 2010 Camaro that Kevin has been building. Yeah, we've been, <laughs> yes. we've been working on it and then we stopped working on it. Yes. And part of the YouTube work is like, a lot like your channel, my channel is mostly what we do in the shop with a little bit of my playtime that gets filmed and, and stuff. Right. And we stopped working on this and people are like, what happened to it? What happened to it? Well, when a customer has a change of plans, you know, the videos yep. stop on that particular project. And yep. I'm sure you've had motors that didn't get finished or yep. anything else that comes through some kind of project. And I mean, this was a big project. Like yeah. the, the, it started with that one thing. Last or 2023, when we were here to fix one of the transmissions, transmission in the wagon, not in Sugar Mama. Mm -hmm. Uh, this car was here and we were looking at it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. Yeah, this was planned to get an SMX. Yes. So it's been built, well, I think, to very easily handle an SMX. It's a double frame rail 25.3 uh, car. Yep. And uh, it's got a lot, a lot, a With lot of bars in it. Tabs for hitch support. Yes, yeah, I leave myself little notes when I yep. remember things and I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta do that. So. So my wife over here sees this this car basically, and she's like, she likes modern cars. She I like the old ones too. I don't like she, the in between ones. <laughs> the wagons. <laughs> she's not a wagon fan. It's just, the rest of the family is, but you know, whatever. But anyway, so she's a, sees this car. We're looking at it, and then it gets me thinking, and she's talking, and then it's like, I called Kevin up, and I said, hey. What are you doing with that car? At that point, it was still not for sale. It was not for sale. Yep. So I got a hold of Spencer. Spencer's the guy, the, the original uh, owner of the car that started the build. Mm -hmm. He's kind of decided to change directions, and that's why I put it on pause. And we worked out a deal. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. That's pretty obvious. I worked out a deal mm -hmm. that this is going to be one bad ombre let me change camera so around here obviously one bad ombre drag gonna be set up for drag radial mm -hmm. not gonna put a big tire cart now the one thing that i did that i did i uh, wanted to mention to say so this is this is gonna be like the 
family radial car. It's not just my wife. Kyle's going to drive this car too. Cool. My daughter, you can drive if she wants, but she's going to be driving Cotton because that's a cool car. Yeah. We're building that car too. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hmm. See, yeah. the ca cars are the gift that keep on giving. That you is do, true. Yes, right. You keep giving money to them. <laughs> <laughs> and, they get, and they keep breaking. They give you some kind of mile thing. What the heck? What the heck? I'm like, is that Steve's voice? It is. <laughs> this is Gulf Coast, Shane, and Mel. We were actually headed to Gainesville, and she was like, I want to stop by KSR and meet Kevin. And I said, so would I. <laughs> there you and go. I opened the door and I'm like, there you go. Oh, we heard you share that super <laughs> voice. <laughs> You're in the middle of Sugar Mama 2.0. Oh. I guess we can call it that. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure out the name. But I'm thinking Sugar Mama 2.0. And, and what? Speaking of the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, the gift that keeps on giving. Coming together. Right? Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> so, all right. We'll talk to you guys in one second. Like right. you're on camera now, so. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna do this as a multi-use car for everybody. Yep. Uh, gonna talk to you about Sugar Mama, the original Sugar Mama, here in a bit. But let's go over this car because this thing is awesome. So it's, it's got a big enough tub in it to put a moderate size slick on it. Uh, it fits a, it swallows up a 315 with lots of room. Yeah. Um, not going to fit a thir uh, 1736 like no, what's on the wagon. No, no. But because that actually, well, that would probably actually end up coming up into here pretty, yeah, pretty hard on this car. Yeah, be all the way to the, yeah. to the top. But yep. it will, like the ride height for the car was, the idea was to put that horizontal section of frame rail about five and a half inches off the ground ah so to have her pretty low yep yep um it's a trz four link uh kit which they now have made those in billet the four link brackets but, nice nice but yeah you can see we were in the process of tabbing the car to mount all the carbon yep. um it's got a rear street fuel cell that fits back there in the back yep um, so do it's still gonna be dual fuel. We're basically doing exactly what uh, Spencer was gonna be doing with the car. Yep. Except he he was gonna end up getting an SMX from me. We're gonna put an SML in it. Yep. And uh, yeah, so this is yeah the the chassis itself I would say is done, with the exception of all the little stuff uh, that they have to get done to them. You know, seat uh, well, yeah little seat stuff. belts are done. Seat belt mounts are done on the driver's side. They're not done on the passenger side. Yep but uh, with a, with a carbon fiber tunnel and yes i'm putting a carbon fiber tunnel in my car in the wagon so this one will have it in it already oh talk about the the uh how the body comes off the entire body comes off of this car yep so so off the, off the chassis which is a really pretty cool feature because you were going to the way we were building this originally was that and we're, what we were working towards was getting the chassis itself powder coated. So like in this bar right here, there's a threaded insert, so it can be unbolted there. It can be unbolted right here because uh, it sandwiches the stock firewall. Uh, there's bolts down here, which you may can see on that side or at the end of the lower, uh, the stock front frame rails. Yeah. Uh, there's bolts that bolt the body to the outer structure of the roll cage. There's couple of tabs in the roof. So the idea is that you get everything kind of made, drop it out, powder coated, it's all oh, pretty. Yeah. Right there. Yep. Yep. And I don't like stuff that like rattles and shakes and stuff. So I try and make the cars we build like like it's not, you know, some old floppy jalopy with all your body panels right. flopping around and yeah, like yeah, yeah. our stuff to be nice and tight and yeah. all that good stuff. And we we went a little overboard on welding the floor pans in you can see on yeah like, on fully, both sides fully silicon bronze brazed on the the whole steel floor pans through there why do you do that once i get started doing something i kind of just go full send so well it, why do you uh, why do you use the the silica bronze so it, it's a no, so, no rust kind of deal no it's just it welds at lower heat so oh. it doesn't warp the sheet metal because you're trying to get enough heat to glue it to the bar and when you, like the sheet metal is super thin. So when you start, you know, when you're brazing it, you know, it doesn't get super crazy on deforming the 
the sheet metal because early on I, I welded the car with steel and it like started warping it and oh. you see a lot of people that don't fully weld them but I like the look of it better than and especially when we're powder coating it like powder coat won't go between a bar and a piece of sheet metal so then eventually it could start rusting between theirs and you'll ah. and then like with street cars say you drive through a rainstorm well water finds its way finds into its places way sure. so then you'd get rust starting between the bar and the sh interior sheet metal so we don't want to have anything to do with that so we fully welded it that's a, no i like that that's cool yep it's uh, awesome and then oh so this is this is uh, the frame rail. stock frame rail all the way back to the firewall. Firewall is in the same spot. Yeah, firewall spot. in the stock location, just smoothed and reshaped. Yeah, and then made for, did modify it for a reverse facing uh, intake manifold. Yep, which may, we never had a steel. I had a um, power. I had an Elvis in it with a reverse facing. I don't know if it'll clear an SMX, but we had a big block block in it at one time for mock-up just to check it out yeah um but it fit a we had a let's see a ron shear intake with the motion dual y yeah and, and it clears that by about an eighth of an inch hmm. so that's pretty much the same pretty close to what my st setup would be we put that motion dual yeah, y on it you got your y and we'd like actually put, put the dual t like the yeah. dual throttle body deal yeah so we were actually in the process of wiring the car Yep. Um, we had a, a piece here that I'll show show you in a minute. That's it's a bulkhead connector for our for our injector harnesses, so it makes it easy to unplug those, change them if you change injector connector style, yep. or if one set of injectors you have a problem with something on the street, you can easily switch from one to the other, change your tune, and keep on running. That was kind of the idea behind that. Yep. This was the main like quick disconnect that's where it was planning to be i mean we were we were going like we were trying to make sick week this year until about i think november is when we we get the ah, pause button so okay but yeah it's it's got the enough stock frame rail to meet uh meet the rules yeah for some classes yeah that's, this piece right here is actually continuous with the whole back of the car Oh. So the frame rail comes all the way through to there. It's got a tab that comes off the bottom, bolts into where the stock subframe would be. And the idea was to tie some kind of, some piece of the chassis all the way to the engine. Okay. For, you know, big, big powery stuff. Yep, yep. And then where this bar comes down, there's a bolt that comes off or a tab and it bolts everything together. Okay. So it ties the front to there as well as the the mid plate itself you can see the bolts where the firewall bolts to the mid plate bar yep yep so that's all part of the removable chassis because the the mid plate bar is a part of the main chassis itself yes yeah that yeah that's that's common that's the same thing as although my i don't have a space in between mine mine the uh in the wagon the whole mid plate is part of the part of the chassis and the engine bolts directly to that mid no, plate yes. so there actually is no plate on the on the engine it yeah, just goes to it stays in the car all the time yeah so we left so it's got the spacers in it because it gives the option of the big block can go back to put it up the oh. firewall or you oh. can put spacers on the front of the and yeah. move it move it okay the that's cool forward. and i try to build our stuff with some adjustability in it like maybe make some plans yep and you can kind of see the bolts on the where the bar connects to the firewall right there so yep. that's that comes unbolted and then the back section can drop out so lots of i mean it was nice. i was excited to get this thing done and get it to the track yep and then the yeah, pause light, got light, hit, yeah life happens now you got it now i got it yeah. then uh uh we have fiberglass front end for it mm -hmm. and we have the stock front end for it yep stock front uh fenders and the front the nose piece are i think upstairs okay like uh, we took all of that apart and i've got the stock trunk for it too but it's got a fiberglass trunk and a race wing yep um, Be because we're going to try making this thing way hopefully with a sml in it uh fully dressed power drag and drive 28 ish 100 pounds maybe hopefully less yep and yep, that, that would be pretty cool 28 is a real good target which should 
a lot of that depends on how big the, the radiator is and the street fuel cell. And I think in ultimate lightweight race trim, especially if you got some fiberglass or carbon doors for it, like you could get down 26, 27, hmm. like dumping all the street stuff, no radiator, methanol all the time. Yeah. But like, it gives you the option to do that. It, it would, yeah, we could have the option of doing that. That that would be interesting. I guess we'd think about that down you know, down but, the road. That's when she wants to go heads up with you in the wagon. You know, she, she <laughs> yeah. comes down, yeah, it all lightweight. Yeah, just get it super lightweight. <laughs> oh, now here's the rear end. Tell us about the rear end. So this, yep. the, the car, ba basically, you you were at the point of going to send it out to powder coat. We were close to getting it to powder coat. Yep. Yeah, real close to powder more. coat, and then start. Uh, Got to put a K member in it. Yep. And you got and you got that all figured out, and the struts, and then this thing is a roller. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yep. There's a little bit more interior tab work to do. Like I never, I mounted the tubs, but the pieces that seal the front part of the tub to the roll cage yep. and the body, those aren't tabbed yet. Um, the rear, the parachute anchor's not there. The parachute mount isn't in the, uh, like the handle mount is not in the roof. Yeah, sim simple little, little, yeah. little fin mean, finished stuff. Probably a couple weeks, I think we could be ready for power coat. Like couple, somebody working on it solid, Okay. Week, two weeks, I think. All right, cool. Ready, but. Cool. Let's, but yeah, we had a, it's got a floater, TRZ. Yeah, full floater. Oh, people have, that is a common question. People don't understand what floaters are all about, why that is, and then they think that that is uh, not safe, although this has a threaded cap on it. So the Mark Williams one that I just, you know, I took the floaters off mine to change the bolt pattern on them, uh -huh. and they're held on, that whole floater assembly is held on by a snap ring. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. So this is looks like it's actually held on with a with a thread threaded nut. Yeah. Or what is that for? That captures the the bearing. That captures the bearing. Yeah. And there's like a locking, like you see the groove, like there's yeah. there's the nut. It's kind of like a trailer deal almost. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're oh, then, so they're putting a preload on it. Well, you can you can run it down until there's zero play. So it's, and a, so it's the, a tapered bearing. Uh, I don't know. It's in the box. We can look at it. But this is that's a strange floater kit. Okay, that's a strange floater kit. Yep, this was actually the first of the TRZ billet face housings to go out the door to yeah. a customer. See that right through here? This is all billet. Mm-hmm. Yep, nice. and then they, it's got some kind of machine piece inside yeah. that pilots the axle tubes and yep. all kinds of trickery. I go way, way, way back with the TRZ guys and yep. got them, uh, actually we're gonna be ordering one of these for the Cutlass pretty soon. Awesome. But yeah, she's all powder coated. There's a wishbone and all the control arms and the anti roll yeah. bar are all done. Comes with one center section and two sets of gears. Mm -hmm. Comes with two sets of t tires and wheels, 275s and 315s. Yep. And front wheels. Just one set of front wheels. One, yeah. Yep. Yeah. One set of front so wheels. Six wheels, six tires. Yep. And then the uh, uh, shelf of a shelf of parts there of things that we were doing. Actually, you were sitting on the. On oh the yeah, third there's number. the third member right there. There you be. Yep, another strange piece. Mm -hmm. And then the drive shaft can. That's a, that's a, is this a, a 10 inch gear or is this a regular nine, nine inch? Nine and a half inch? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then the uh, drive shaft tunnel. Mm -hmm. Just saw the drive shaft people here and be building a drive shaft for this car too. There you go. <laughs> but that rack of parts, there's the wishbone. Oh, yeah, the wishbone. Air kit, TBM brakes for it. Yep, street pump, street fuel cell. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Some struts on there. You got it's got oh, yeah. the killer four way adjustable uh, rear struts. Fancy schmancy AFCO four way adjustable deals. Oh. Yeah. Got one adjustment there, and then the high speed, I think, is here. Yeah, the high speed adjustment. Oh, dang. Fancy radial tire fancy, stuff. Fan dancy radial tire stuff. Yeah. And then. There's the anti-roll bar. Oh. Big beefy, it's it's a two tube thing, so there's a tube on the inner and then there's a tube on the outer. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I, uh, I forgot, I'm sorry, but we started talking about what the deal is with floaters. So oh, yeah. that floater being there, when you have a regular axle flange like this, these bend all the time. You'd be amazed how many times on a hub dyno now to have somebody come in that has a regular axle set up like this and a Ford nine inch and how often the flange is actually bent on it. Very, very often. So 
they're also prone to break and it is SFI required. NHA requires you at what, you know what horsepower level or what speed that they require a full floater? I think it's like 215. Okay, so there's there there is speeds that are required and ETs that are required to have a full floater because they are safer. Even that snap ring style, I mean, that thing's a bulletproof deal. I mean, it's been proven out for years from Mark Williams. You might think it's not all that great, but well, it ain't going nowhere. And this is the axle. So if this and that's breaks, axle. Yeah, this, see, this isn't holding the wheel in. Right. Whereas, like, well, you got an axle right like there. Like this, it breaks. It breaks the end off. You're in a big time world of hurt. Yep. Here, here, ironically enough, if it breaks the axle right here, you're still in a world, world of hurt because it will drive it right into the freaking guardrail. Yep. It'll turn whichever <laughs> It'll turn. direction opposite of the tire. But at least, the, but at least the wheel will still be on it. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I probably really know that. If it happens early in the run, which is typically when it does. Yeah. You know, early in the first You might be able to save it. You may be able to save it. Though, yeah. So. Yeah. Now the the and a roll bar. These are neat because ah uh, yeah. See the mm -hmm. the. This engages on the shaft here, which is neat. This this anti roll bar is actually a little bit bigger than what is in my uh, wagon. To tell you the truth, uh, this part might be the same size, but I've always wondered about it because it has this really small little three eighths heim joints. Hmm. You know, could be made bigger, but they still look fine. Yeah. But uh, this keeps the the chassis from wanting to pick up and twist. Mm -hmm. This makes the car stay it makes the tire plant and twist hard but the car stays well. parallel level with the rear end yep keep yeah. the tire the rear tire loaded even the rear tires oh. loaded evenly i see that so see, this is a different style so yeah, my mark my double, mark williams double coats of bearing yeah my mark williams is a straight radial bearing mm. hmm. on the hub interesting yes it is so this being a tapered style so yeah you you preload Yep. Uh, I've always just taken, I spin them in until there's, you can, you know, you can grab the rotor and there's no play. Yeah. And then back it off one notch and then you put the, yeah, the, the lock locking in it. key in it, which that's all in a box. But yeah. actually it's got strange rotors, but Spencer bought the TBM, so these need to get changed to the TBMs. Oh yeah. Has a, yeah, this thing has TBM brakes from our buddy uh, Doug Cook and mm -hmm. all that happy stuff. There's there's a lot of stuff that's already. I mean, here's all the the four link bars and everything. Yep, we got a pair. Of, nice, uh, powder coated parachutes. already. Parachutes already. Fire system. Fire like, system. Which fire system is it? Uh, it's a spa. Spa. Is that yeah. the one that sprays the foam like the one in my car? Um, it's a. Heck, I don't know. It's a fairly small bottle. Yeah. But it's got the, obviously. Wow, that's a, yeah, that's a little teeny bottle. Be added, but it's got a, this was more like a driver protection deal. It's got an oh. automatic fire yeah. nozzle if it gets warm. Freaking everything is all dusty. Yep, yep, yep. But. I see. So the agent is, I don't know. Huh. Well, we'll definitely look at that. Interesting. Okay. Something cool. we've used in the road race cars through the years. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where. But is it a? It's not a powder, is it? No, it's a liquid. It's a liquid. Yeah, some okay. kind of. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of stuff. Okay. But, Excellent. But yeah, she was. Uh, look she was getting close. Very. Gotta look underneath the floor of what's all going on in these cars. Yep. There's a yep. lot of bars. You can see it's got two spots for a transmission cross member. Yep. One for a power guide. One for a turbo 400. Yep. Well, def and definitely have a 400 in it. The Turbo 400 was a late addition, which is why it's an add-on. Gotcha. Like it was supposed to just be a power glide car, and then, and then he decided SMX, and I'm like, well, if you go with an SMX, it's gonna need a 400. So that kind of well, let's change add directions. Extra, let's add an extra cross member. So, and that also, I I decided on adding the double frame rail when it came to the SMX just to. Ah. Oh, so the double frame rail was an add-on too. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't gonna have the double frame rail in it, which I'm not a like professional chassis guy that builds these cars all the time, but I know there's different sizing that some guys do with the mm -hmm. double frame rail. Yep. And I've heard of guys tuning them, but my theory has always been to build the tub stiff and then let the shocks do your adjustments and like 
you can tune the car with the shocks and sure because i've heard of the pro mod guys they actually build flex into the car now like there's actually Ooh. the firewall yeah i can believe it to the strut mount like they they want the front of the car to flex and i'm like oh, really that seems, that seems wild mm. but mm. that pro level pro mod stuff is another world that's another world another mm -hmm. world awesome the wheels and tires yeah might as well see these wheels and tires Dig them out. Gotta keep them hitting. Awesome. Them. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Racecraft wing for it. Oh, yeah, racecraft wing. Mm. This is gonna be a nice, 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 nice car. Free fight, free spider webs, that's nice. That's the same, uh, let's see. And I have, I have that wheel for my, uh, for the wagon. I think that's my, yeah, well, that's my street wheel, I think. Interesting. That's a 275. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a shiny bugger. 275 on a 12. Yeah. And then we've got uh, some 315s on a 14. All right. Oh, that reminds me. So this wheel, uh, this is a 12 inch wide wheel. On a 275 tire. You said the 315s are on 14? Yep. Remember going back to the wagon and the uh, wide wheel, the 20 inch wide wheel. Did you see that? Did yeah. you watch that? It's yeah. pretty interesting. So the 20 inch wide wheel, this is 14 inch wide wheel on a 10 inch wide tire. So this is, mm -hmm. mm, this is tread width right 11 about 11 and a quarter is what the. Is it actually, actually 11 and a quarter? Yep. Yeah, right here. And so you have all this out there. Stabilizes the sidewall. Yep. Hot diggity dog. Oh, those are shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we always store them face down so it keeps the barrels clean. Yeah, so it stays nice. Yeah, look at that. That's interesting. So that's a 315 tire, mm -hmm. 275 tire. This is the tire that's on Sugar Mama right now is a 275. Will not fit a 315, especially when you widen it out like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like like that's, that's going to be cool. This thing swallows up the 315s. Oh, yeah. I would imagine so. Because that's, you know, that's being the tub. I think I might have some pictures somewhere because we okay. had it mocked up with the rear end fully in it and we were, we took everything out to have the rear suspension powder coated. Mm -hmm. And then the next move was finishing out the chassis yep, yep. to get it out the powder coat. Cool. Which you get to pick which color you want for the chassis now. <laughs> Probably the same as what's already done. You want to do that same color? Yeah, that same color is cool. Yeah. They did I like say that. that was a really strong powder coat. Like we've got a, a shop that's two blocks away that doesn't oh. powder coating for us. Oh, that makes that easy. Yeah, we don't have to ship stuff way far off to, to do the powder coating. Mm hmm So you can do you bring do you roll it over there on this on here? No, the chassis. Only the chassis is getting powder coated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean do you roll you roll the chassis over mount it on this or you just take it over there? No, and we're gonna pick it up, put it on the flatbed. And <laughs> okay. flatbed open trailer and get over there because we did another one like that. Actually, the, the roll cage in the Corvette we took out and had it powder coated. Yep. But we just, three people, we can pick it up, walk it onto the trailer, and All right. they got a big, they do um, industrial stuff like huge staircases. Oh, yeah, they yeah. Got a huge oven that they yep. can put four of these cars in. That's awesome. But kind of a, kind of a neat deal. Yep. All right. Anything else we want to talk about this right now? I don't know. This is this is the be this is the beginning. So yeah. we're uh, be, uh, yeah. excited to be doing uh, something like this with you. When yeah, we're yeah we're gonna finish. So our the goal in life on this thing is, uh, well not the goal. Well, Lord willing, we will debut this thing. The wife will be driving this thing. Sick week twenty twenty five. Okay. Is that twenty five? Yeah, it sounds like a really long ways. It's just next year. Yeah. So. We'll hopefully have everything, we'll need to get it all done. Might not debut it there, because obviously we want to test with it first. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it, needs, it, needs <laughs> it needs a bunch of testing, yep. but uh, yeah. that, is, that is the goal. Yeah, and people probably don't know, we go back 15 years, like with Will. Yeah, with Will, yeah, because, yeah. yeah. yeah what, Will used to be your fastest customer, didn't he? Will, Will was the fastest customer for a long time, yeah. 418 at 182 with his third gen Camaro. Yeah. And I sent... Y'all don't know this, but I texted Steve a picture the other night. I was at Will's house digging through boxes and yeah. found some old valves that came out of the heads that Steve had built. And they, Steve had actually wrote on them and stuff. And I texted him a picture of like <laughs> some valve from like, you know, 10 years ago that was yeah. that was in Will's shop, which 
and the funny, yeah. like to save his old stuff. And the funny thing is, is that that engine out of that car, that engine is still at your shop. Is still at my shop. Hmm. That's one of those projects that never went anywhere. In fact, it's in my storage unit. Hmm. That entire engine, <laughs> exactly as it was before. We shouldn't talk about it too much. Will 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 might get sad because <laughs> he regrets selling that car. Yep. Yeah, I don't know where the car ended up, but. All right, cool. I think we're uh, we're gonna finish up and we're gonna talk business and how we're gonna start making things happen here, and then we're gonna be on to uh, uh, site three for or trip part part three of trip or site three. Forget what I said earlier. Third location. Third location. How about that? Scene scene three. All right, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. All right, go visit Kevin's channel. I'm sure you guys already are. Yeah, we 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 we, we yeah we're in the same circle. We pretty much share the same deal. So <laughs> if you're not, go over there, like, subscribe, all that good happy jive. Cool. Oh yeah, Gulf Coast Drive Shaft too. They're patiently standing over here. <laughs> all right, stop three. Lo and behold, we're here. We might as well. Might as well go see some racing. Let's go see some racing. Yeah. We're gonna go hang out in Clay Milken's pit. Yeah. So we're going to uh, because Clay's kind of an avid follower and doer of. Uh, drag and drive stuff also which is cool yeah. so that's awesome actually it actually turns out a lot of those guys are not cool guys yeah well stock guys too so then all right get you a little bit of coverage while we're here too all right His turn. you see it oh yeah see our turn who's this guy clay milliken awesome we already knew him <laughs> everybody knows him you can't you can't get rid of people anywhere you go hey jeff jeff Nice, yeah, see, now I'm filming you, yeah. You're... <laughs> so, yes, get to go here in the pits with Clay. Awesome. They're just getting ready to warm up, and when I'm not in the way, I'll go over and look at stuff. I think it's cool. Yeah, I like the trailer, how the trailer's set up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll check out the whole thing. It's pretty awesome. Anything you know about a gasoline engine, or an alcohol burning engine for the most part, more so gasoline. Anything you know about it, throw it out the window. It does not apply here. Yeah. Alrighty, now I gotta tell you that this was way cooler, way better than I was expecting. And I'm gonna show you stuff like this. Why is there a cabinet full of cylinder heads? Why? What is up with all these pistons, rods, the racks, the cylinder heads, the fuel injection, the clutch, the tire, the wheel? I'm going to show you a lot of stuff that I did not know that I learned. So come back Thursday for the next video. You're going to like it, and you're going to learn stuff. New crew guy, Jeff Lutz.